know, these are cancer patients for the most part, and they're people who have tried other medicines that have not worked, and they're kind of running out of options. And you know, it's very rewarding to be able to offer a potential treatment that we hope the patients will respond to, um, but at the very least, there's, there's hope for them. The moment that I learned about the prize was on the phone with uh, Charlene de Carvalho Heineken, who is a family member from the Heineken family and from the foundation. It was in that phone call that Charlene told me that I had been selected for the award. And, you know, my heart stopped in that moment. I was shocked and surprised and elated. And shortly thereafter, the celebration began. But um, in that moment, it was quite a surprise. Uh, so my field of expertise is chemical biology, and I focus on technology development uh, rooted in chemistry with applications to studying human diseases and developing new types of therapeutics. Much of the biology that we work on in my laboratory is called glycobiology. So this is the biology of sugar molecules. And what we have learned in our research is that there are changes in the structures of these sugars particularly on the surface of cells. And these changes can be useful for diagnosing diseases and also for developing new kinds of medicines. Well, cell surfaces are coated with complex carbohydrates and we call them glycans. I like to analogize them to like vegetation. You know, if you were flying over the surface of the planet Earth in a helicopter, in a drone, um, you would see a very complicated landscape below. You would see forests and prairies. You would see grass and shrubbery and trees. And the surface of a cell is similar. There are many features with different dimensions and different physical properties. And the glycans contribute a lot to that diversity and to that vegetation. We know, for example, that when a healthy cell transforms into a cancer cell, there are changes in that glycosylation, right, in the sugars on the cell surface. And so we study that and we develop medicines that can intentionally change the landscape of those sugars to convert them from being diseased to being healthy. So sometimes I use metaphors to describe the medicines that we make. I might call one type of medicine like a molecular lawnmower which mows the grass on the cell and takes off sugars that are disease causing. We have other kinds of medicines that we've more recently developed that I like to think of as chainsaws that literally cut down trees that are bad trees, they're causing a disease. And so the vegetation metaphor takes you pretty far in the world of glycobiology. The sources of inspiration for our research are patients. Uh, so for example, in my family, um, there's a pretty high incidence of cancers. So for many decades of my life, I've been thinking about uh, cancer and how my mother was treated for breast cancer, my father was treated for colon cancer. They both survived, many people don't. And so that has also motivated the work that we do in my lab. Well, my big picture goal, um, I would say my career scale goal, uh, would be to extract the value of glycoscience for human disease and diagnostics. Um, so in other words, my goal is to try to learn enough about glycoscience in order to make medicines and new tools for patients and their doctors to improve human health. And since I started learning about the field, I've had this long-standing vision that there's a lot of benefit to human health that could be achieved if we understood glycobiology better. And so if, if I can contribute to the translation of the knowledge to the medicine, um, I'll feel like I have fulfilled some role, you know, as a scientist.